If you've ever found an unknown device on your network, or if a particular computer on your network is taking up too much bandwidth, Evil Limiter gives you the ability to limit any device on your network without requiring administrative privileges. We'll show you how it works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you've ever detected a device connected to your network that you don't recognize, Evil Limiter could be the perfect solution. Now, rather than deauthenticating it and totally kicking it off the Wi Fi network, you can simply ARP poison it and make it so it can't connect internally. Now, another way you can do this is to limit the connection to the point that pretty much nobody would want to stick around. And this is where Evil Limiter is really interesting in that you can do this on any network that you have the password to. Now, in order to try this tool, you'll need to have Python 3, and you'll also need a Linux computer because while I tried this on Mac OS, I wasn't able to get it working. If you have any questions about setting this up, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. But once you have Python 3 set up on your Ubuntu or Kali computer, you should be ready to go. In order to get started using Evil Limiter, the easiest way is to go to the GitHub page here. The address is pretty easy to remember because it is just uh, bitbrute slash evil limiter after github.com. So if you go to this page, there's a lot of different documentation here, which makes the installation process really easy. The easiest way of doing this is to type git clone and then the GitHub uh, library right here to download the entire repository. And if I do so, I can see that I actually ha already have it downloaded. But if you were downloading this, then you would have the entire repository on your computer. So next we'll need to type CD and then evil limiter and then type LS to see all the files that are inside. And here you can see the next step in the installation is to type sudo python3 setup high install. Now, when I ran this on my first computer, this ran super quickly and it only took a couple seconds to install. But when it, I ran it on this computer in particular, it seemed to take a very long time. Although I think that that was just an issue with my installation, but your mileage may vary on that. Now I already have this set up, so instead I can just go ahead and type evil limiter and see what the console looks like. Now here you can see I didn't run it as root, so I'll go back and type sudo evil limiter and I'll type in the password. And it should be able to automatically detect our default interface our default gateway, our gateway's MAC address, and then our net uh, network mask. So all this information is really helpful because it will provide the foundation for the ARP spoofing that's going to happen in order to facilitate all the various things this program can do. So, all right, what are the commands we can use? Well, if we type a question mark, then we can see a list of all the various commands that are supported. And here we can see we can scan, we can identify the list of hosts that we've discovered. And then once we have an ID associated with them, we can assign these commands, which are to limit them to a particular uh, connection rate, to block one particularly, or to free one from the purgatory we put them in. And of course, we can also press clear in order to just completely exit out and uh, free everybody that we've been possibly manipulating the connection of. So, all right, let's get started. Let's say that this is our network and we want to identify any computers that are connected and they that aren't supposed to be there. We can first type scan and this will conduct an ARP scan, but rather than just tell you that, let's type sudo Wireshark and see if we can look at the traffic as this flows. Now in Wireshark, I'm gonna go ahead and select the same interface and we'll just listen in on what's going on. And that should allow us to see a little bit about what the script is doing because it is really cool. So you can see that there are currently a bunch of ARP scans going, going on. Uh, actually, let me just run it again, just so we can see. And here we can see a giant flood of um, different ARP packets that are being sent out requesting who has all these possible theoretical ARP uh, uh, IP addresses. 
Now, if any of the devices on the network have that IP address, they will report back with their MAC address and will be able to do all sorts of wonderful things by basically changing their connection so that it goes through us instead of the router. Now, okay, cool. We've discovered six hosts on the network. Let's identify them by typing hosts. Now you can see we've identified five different devices plus the default gateway, which would mean the router. Now the router is kind of off limits. It's not, we're not really gonna be able to affect the router's connection to itself. So instead we have these five other targets to pick from. Now, let's say that we don't know one of these and we want to dramatically slow the traffic, but we don't wanna cut it off the network completely. Maybe this is someone we wanna frustrate into getting off the network, like an employee at our business maybe that we're administrating this network who is on YouTube and it's slowing down our point of sale machine. So now we can't make any purchases uh, because instead this employee is taking up too much bandwidth on the internet. So let's say their device is number 11, which is option four. And we can just say we want to limit four to, uh, let's do, a hundred kilobits. I'm sure that would be really fun for them. So we'll go ahead and just use that example. And now we are limiting one of these devices to a hundred kilobits. So I can type hosts again, and we can see now that this one is being limited. And if we go over to Wireshark, we can see that uh, there's a whole bunch of traffic that is now basically doing some art poisoning, attempting to get this device uh, which we've selected. In this case, this is number 192.168.0.11. You can see that's the target of a lot of these uh, different queries. So what it's basically doing is it's swapping out the router's MAC address for ours and saying, hey, you have to go through me instead. And then we're limiting the connection speed. So we're connected to the gateway and that allows us to provide an internet connection to this poor soul here who's now limited to um, 100 uh, kilobytes a second. But uh, it also means that if we want to go after someone else, let's say we don't like 192.168.0.5, that's a, a rogue access point, or a rogue device that's uh, joined our access point, and we want it just off the network. Okay, well, let's get rid of it. So what we can do now is type, uh, let's see, go back up to the commands just so I can reference them. We're gonna block, and then let's say the number three. Now three is blocked. So if we type host again, all of a sudden we can see there's two different devices we've affected on the network. The other ones are free to go about perfectly fine and this shouldn't impact their connection at all. However, for our employee who is using too much bandwidth and then for our interloper who is not allowed on the network at all, this one is not able to access any network resources whatsoever. And this one has been slowed down so much that they probably are just gonna go back to doing their work because nobody would want to use the internet at that speed. So because of this, we can very quickly also free them if we want to release the controls in the event that maybe we're not, we're not uh, meaning to do this or we identified the wrong target. It's just as easy as typing clear. And then that should allow us to type hosts, Ooh, question mark, and oh, okay. So instead we'll type free and then three and free four. After that, we can type clear and we're basically done with this program. We can type control C and it'll do all the cleanup that we need to return the host back to the original. Here we go, we can see that it's basically re-arping everyone and reconnecting them back to the original router. Now what we just did was took a scan of the entire network, identified individual hosts, and then decided exactly how fast we wanted them to be able to access the internet. In one case, we didn't want them to access the internet at all. Now, while this is much less dramatic than simply deauthing them to the point that they're not on the network at all anymore, it still allows us to make accessing the network a frustrating experience for someone who's doing something they shouldn't be. While Evil Limiter does give you the ability to go into pretty much any network you have the password to and limit or block devices, that doesn't mean it's legal to. Technically, this can be considered a denial of service attack, even if you're just limiting the internet access speed. So before you do this, you need to make sure that this is your home or work network that you administer and not some random person's network that you have the ability to connect to. 
When used correctly, Evil Limiter is a great way to make sure that no devices are hogging too much bandwidth or to frustrate anyone who's got into your network into just dropping the connection because they think your router is garbage and your connection is useless. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any questions about Evil Limiter, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.